This little bird is the only child of his parents. But an unfortunate incident leaves him alone and he needs to find his own way and also learn how to fly. Life for these birds isn't easy. These flock of golden plovers spend the winter in the south and during the spring, they all gather to travel to the Arctic region. However, the native birds of the Arctic region don't like the plovers taking their place. However, a giant falcon named Shadow is always looking forward to spring so he can feed on the innocent plovers. He forces other birds like the skua to become his decoy and help him in hunting the plovers. The skua tries to excuse himself, but Shadow convinces him to do it. He tells the skua to distract the leader of the plovers. Once he is gone, the falcon will attack the poor birds and enjoy the feast. The skua does as said, and unfortunately the leader falls for this trick. Luckily, a clever plover takes over and guides his flock. A few of them get taken away by Shadow, but the most of the plovers succeed in making a safe landing. Afterward, they enjoy the beautiful weather and dance in joy. Every spring they gather here to make their nests and lay eggs. The hatching day is no less than a festival, and every family of plover welcomes their kids. One such lovely couple only manages to hatch one egg and name their only child Ploey. Little Ploey is really innocent and gets excited to see his parents. They teach him all the basics like walking around and catching worms. But it's still not enough. The winter is around the corner, and before it arrives, all the little plovers must learn how to fly. Ploey's parents also tell him about the upcoming migration. They will move to the southern ocean and fly around the shore together. However, Ploey can't understand why they have to do it when everything here seems perfect. Therefore, his mother explains how the snow covers the northern area, and if the plovers don't migrate, their species will freeze to death and disappear from the globe. Hearing this, Ploey gets excited to practice flying, but her mother says that flying isn't the difficult part. Every plover learns it sooner or later. The tough part is learning to survive every kind of circumstance. Ploey doesn't understand, but he is ready to work hard and become a leader like his dad. During the training, Ploey meets a female plover named Ploveria. As they are age mates, they get along really well. They keep sticking together all day and eventually fall in love with each other. After a few days, the skua comes to meet the plover leader who doesn't seem to be happy seeing him. The skua says that he has gone vegan and also quit his job of being Shadow's decoy. He will be traveling to Paradise Valley and spending the winter there. It's called the Village of Cowards and weak birds take shelter there. Before leaving, the skua wanted to warn the plovers about an upcoming attack of the evil Shadow. Suddenly, Ploey arrives looking for his dad and asks him what a coward is. The dad tells him that there are two types of birds. Those who fly to the south in autumn and those who don't have the guts for that survive winter in a hidden valley somewhere in the mountains. Those are called cowards. But the plovers are brave, so they will prepare for the migration. But before that, they need to lay a trap to defeat the falcon. The adults prepare a net to catch Shadow and get rid of him for good. Meanwhile, the young plovers train in the flying school. Their wings are born to do it. The birds only need to believe in themselves. One by one, each plover jumps off a high rock and enjoys their first flight. Ploveria succeeds too, but Ploey is still afraid to try. He eventually gathers courage and jumps. He manages to fly a little, but before he can gain balance, Shadow arrives there out of nowhere and grabs Ploey. The poor bird starts crying for help, which makes his dad worried. He rushes to save his son, but gets trapped himself. Ploey falls to a safe spot, but his dad gets eaten by the evil falcon. It's been days since that unfortunate incident, but Ploey hasn't eaten anything and also doesn't talk anymore. He only keeps lying in his nest holding his dad's feather. His mother keeps encouraging him to practice flying as they migrate soon, but Ploey doesn't feel ready. He thinks that if he flies again, it will bring more danger. Ploveria comes to meet him and invites him to play. She convinces him to try flying again, but when Ploey does that, he gets caught by a chubby cat. The cat takes him home where the owner locks Ploey in a birdcage. Meanwhile, his mother and Ploveria have accepted that Ploey is eaten by the cat. They regret forcing him to fly and wish they could carry him on their backs. The flock prepares for their flight and heads south. Poor Ploey sees his family leaving him and keeps calling them to stop. The cat is there too and attacks the birdcage. The door accidentally opens and Ploey takes this chance to escape. He manages to jump out of the window and rushes after his family. Unfortunately, they can't hear and Ploey can't fly to them. He gets heartbroken and walks back to his nest. Ploey holds on to his dad's feather and waits for a miracle. Suddenly, the feather flies away, and Ploey rushes after it. 
He eventually reaches the town and meets a group of sparrows. They are shocked to see a plover as there's no way one can survive the winter here. The shops will be closed and there will be no food. The sparrows do mention the Paradise Valley, which may have favorable climate and enough food. Chloe asks for the address as he's going to walk there and wait for his family to return. The sparrows are shocked by his plan but they still tell him the address with the help of postcards. Chloe immediately sets out on his journey and heads towards the giant mountains. Soon the weather starts getting cold and freezes all the plants. Eventually, everything gets covered in snow. Chloe doesn't give up and keeps walking. He suddenly sees a bird in the sky and mistakes it as the skua. But little does he know, it's the deadly falcon. Chloe rushes to save himself and hides under the snow. Once the falcon leaves, Chloe realizes that he's actually standing under the white feathers of a ptarmigan. The ptarmigan gets really angry at Chloe because he ruined the trap set up to catch the falcon. He also wonders why Chloe hasn't migrated to the south. After hearing that the poor bird is left behind, the ptarmigan advises him to learn a valuable life lesson. Sometimes nobody cares for you, and you have got to make it entirely on your own. Chloe apologizes for the disturbance and continues to travel towards the valley. The ptarmigan makes fun of him walking despite being a bird, but this doesn't break Chloe's determination, and he keeps moving forward. As the night sets in, Chloe gets scared and also notices the falcon flying nearby. He hides in a cave to spend the night, but the next morning he realizes that it is again the ptarmigan. The old guy gets really angry at his privacy getting interrupted again, but Chloe explains that his white fur becomes invisible in the snow. The ptarmigan calls his feathers a camouflage. It helps him to hide from the falcon. A golden plover like Ploy can get noticed from miles away. As the ptarmigan says that, he gets a great idea. He stops Ploy and offers to guide him to the Paradise Valley. In exchange, Ploy has to do him a small favor, which he will only reveal once they get to the top of the mountain. He also gets friendlier and introduces himself as Giron. They travel towards the mountain and find some weird footprints on the way. Jiron reveals that the footprints belong to a hungry fox that lives nearby so they must be extra careful from now on. After reaching the top of the mountain, Giron shows the hole in his feather that was caused by a bullet fired at him. Giron didn't only survive but he also stole a bunch of traps from the hunter. He keeps them with his only friend, which is a seashell. Ploe is confused but he doesn't want to judge Giron. A lonely guy can even make a rock his friend. Giron pulls out a claw trap and a few bombs. If he somehow manages to trap Shadow in the claw, he will kill him with the bombs. But to make this plan work, he needs a decoy. Ploe immediately understands that Jiron wants him to be the decoy. Ploe refuses to do it, as he will definitely get killed by Shadow before he even reaches the trap. Jiron tries to convince him but Ploe keeps walking away and they both slip down the mountain. However, Ploe eventually agrees, as he also wants to avenge the Falcon for killing his dad. They lay down the claw trap and Ploe sits in the center while Giron is hiding nearby holding the bombs. Once Shadow gets trapped, Giron will throw the bomb and boom, everything will become perfect. However, this plan is not as easy as it sounds. Ploe keeps sitting in the trap for hours but the Falcon doesn't arrive. Giron also falls asleep while waiting so Ploe starts playing around. He suddenly hears a help call and rushes towards the sound. It's a small mouse stuck in the middle of a river. He begs Ploe to pass him a stick so he can get to the other side. Ploe immediately helps him and the mouse promises to remember this favor. Ploe was about to turn back but the ice under his feet started to crack. Ploe fails to jump back in time and he starts getting pulled towards the waterfall. Luckily Giron rescues the little plover in time. He scolds Ploe for risking his life for a stranger who didn't even help when Ploe was in danger. He repeats his life theory that nobody cares and you are on your own. Ploe starts crying and Giron feels sorry for him. He hugs the little bird tightly and advises him not to let his feathers get wet during winter. As the night is about to set in, they take shelter in a cave and eat some plants. Ploe doesn't like the taste which reminds Giron of his kids. They also didn't like this plant. One unlucky day he had left them in the nest to gather food, but Shadow arrived nearby. Giron sacrificed himself to distract Shadow away from his kids. He got knocked out in cold, but when he returned, his kids were already taken away by the evil falcon. That's why Jiron is so determined to kill Shadow. This reminds Ploe of the incident that took away his father. He also wants to avenge Shadow. Jiron encourages him and points towards the sky.
He says that all of their dead ones have become stars, and they are watching over them for afar. After the story, Jiran falls into a deep sleep and doesn't realize that the hungry fox is right behind him. The fox grabs Giron and walks away at full speed. Chloe keeps following them but he can't do anything alone. He picks up Giron's seashell and blows in it. It creates a soothing sound that calls the group of mice. It also includes the one whom Chloe helped. The seashell is actually used by Giron to call for help whenever he is in danger. He seemed lonely, but actually he has a lot of caring friends who are always there to help him, just like the mice. They comfort Chloe and take him to the cave where the fox lives. He is preparing to cook and eat the ptarmigan, but suddenly someone arrives at the door. It's the mice that have arranged themselves to create the shadow of a female fox. They succeed in luring the fox while Chloe rushes to rescue Giron. The mice tell them to run away immediately while they keep the fox busy. However, Giron seems really tired and asks Chloe to continue his journey without him. Chloe refuses to leave him behind and promises to find some herbs to treat him. While Chloe is collecting herbs, a dangerous snowstorm arrives and covers everything. Chloe can't see properly and walks in the wrong direction. He ends up in a cave built on top of a hill. Chloe finds a huge nest there and decides to take a nap before continuing his journey. After a while, he wakes up by some noise and realizes that this nest actually belongs to Shadow. Poor little bird walked towards his death himself. Chloe hides under the leaves and witnesses the falcon talking to the ghost of his wife. She is scolding him for not collecting enough food and also failing to locate the Paradise Valley. Chloe tries to sneak out but Hungry Shadow catches him and threatens to eat him and his remaining flock. Chloe looks back in his eye and says that he may eat a happy plover, but that will never end the misery Shadow is facing in his life. Hurting others will never satisfy his hunger. The falcon doesn't care and proceeds to eat him. Luckily, Giron arrives in time and saves Chloe. He also brought a bomb and asked Chloe to use it. Chloe can't let Jiren sacrifice himself to kill the Falcon, so Proe throws the bomb in the cave. When Shadow gets distracted, Chloe and Jiren jumps down from the hill. Chloe is completely fine, but Jiren seems really sick and injured. Chloe wants to help him, but it's too late. In his last words, Jiren tells Chloe that his family and the stars will guide him to the Paradise Valley. Chloe gets really sad after seeing his mate dying in front of him. He loses his own will to live and keeps wandering here and there. One night he dreams of Ploveria who seems to have forgotten Ploe and found a new partner. When Ploe wakes up he gets really angry and decides to stay strong so he can unite with his love. Ploe notices that he has already reached the mountains behind which the valley is located. But he still has to conquer them to reach his destination. The snowstorm gets wilder and wilder and the poor bird can't fight it anymore. He falls unconscious and drops his seashell. The wind passes through the seashell and calls a moosey for help. The moose picks up Chloe and takes him home, the beautiful Paradise Valley. There lives only a few animals including the skua. They get really worried to see Chloe's condition and try everything to cure him, but his pulse can't be felt anymore. The animals declare him dead and get ready to bury him. Suddenly, Chloe coughs and starts breathing again. Everyone welcomes him to the valley and throws a celebration party. Chloe finally gets to have some quality time in which he eats, gets a bath and even a free massage. This valley is called paradise for a reason. Things can't get better than this. After a few weeks, spring arrives. The plovers will be returning soon and Shadow will attack them again. Chloe is worried about his family but he can't do anything with his useless wings. The sheep encourages him and says that love can make one do the impossible. Chloe has two choices. Either he can stay here to save himself or use the power of love to learn flying and protect his family. After thinking for a while, he climbs up a high mountain and jumps. The other animals assume that Ploe has given up on his life, but actually Ploe is learning to fly. He gets really excited and tells his friends, they still want him to stay in the valley but Ploe isn't a coward. He must go back to his family. After a few days the Plovers finally return to the south under the leadership of Ploveria. Suddenly Shadow attacks them and catches Ploveria but someone arrives to help her. It's no other than Ploe. He distracts the falcon away and lets all the Plovers land down safely. He heads towards the town and finds Jiron there. He is alive. Ploe gets really happy to see his mate, but he doesn't have time to celebrate. Shadow is right after him. Jiron has brought his claw trap and bombs, and Ploe tries using them but he fails. Ploe doesn't give up and tries to trap Shadow in the birdcage. When that also doesn't work, Ploveria arrives to help him. Together they distract Shadow and make him hit a giant bell and fall inside a grave. Jiron throws mud over him and finishes off the job. 
Chloe's mother is really happy to see her son becoming a brave plover like his dad. Plaveria is impressed too, and also reveals that she never found a new partner because she only wants to fly with Chloe. Hearing this, Chloe feels delighted and promises that he will not make her fly alone ever again. Chloe also greets Giron and requests him to stay, but Giron says that his real home is the Snow Mountains, but he will keep dropping by to meet his little friend. After saying him goodbye, Chloe heads back to his flock, because he is their new leader.